Hey guys, welcome to the Scholar Online YouTube channel, the channel that is all about learning. If you're new to the channel and if you haven't subscribed yet, please click on the subscribe button at the bottom of the video that you're watching right now. It's that red button over there. Just click on it and turn on the notifications so that you'll be notified every time we produce a new video on this channel. We generally produce new videos on a Wednesday and on a Saturday and sometimes only once a week. It depends really. Um, sometimes our videos are very long and we then only produce one video a week instead of two. All right. And if you're new to our channel as well, we always uh, make sure that we give you all the information that you need to follow along with the videos that we produce. So at the bottom of the video, right next to uh, where the description should be, there is a button over there that says shows more. You can click on it and it's going to expand the description. Okay. So if we discuss about, you know, a link or, you know, something that was, I say to you, I'm going to link it in the description below. You're going to find that link over there. All right. And for every video that we make as well, we have timestamps to help you navigate through our content a little bit better. As you can see, a lot of our videos are very, very long because we explain all of our concepts in great detail. Okay. So instead of watching the entire three hour video, you can just read through the time step and figure out which part of the video you want to see. Of course, you're welcome to watch the entire video. But if, for example, you're coming back and you wanted to remind yourself of something, you can use the timestamp. Okay. The way that timestamps work is if, for example, you want to, you know, figure out, oh, this is how I want to do a tweet, a tweet with an image. Just click on the timestamp over there and it's going to fast forward and take you to that section that is talking about that. Okay. So this helps you navigate through the videos that we're making. Okay. You don't have to watch the entire video. Okay. So on the description as well, we will have links to our YouTube, Instagram, and all of that, you know, so feel free to like, you know, follow us on social media so that, you know, you can learn more about Ascolo online. In this lecture, we're going to be creating a simple a chatbot using deep learning and a Python, all right? First of all, we'll have a quick overview as to um, what is machine learning specifically with respect to deep learning and the chatbot that we're going to be building. And then we'll go through um, what is the chatbot intense file and um, the kind of information you have to uh, put in there and how to build a good intense file. And then after that, we will go and create our chatbot model, obviously based on the intents that we're going to be giving it. And then after that, we'll write a little bit of code to sort of process the data that we're getting, process the information that we get in a way that the machine can read and understand what we're trying to tell it and then um, finally we're going to build a front end that um, our you know a chatbot um, we're going to be able to communicate um, to our chatbot with all right um, and then finally we will test our chatbot and you'll see we'll be asking it question it's going to be fun um, so stick around all the way to the end and uh, learn some of these skills which I think are very very important skills especially as far as Python and uh, Python programming development is concerned um, so yeah let's get started so first of all, uh, with respect to giving you an overview on machine learning, I just like to stress that this is not going to be a highly theoretical course and none of our courses on Scholar Online are theoretical at all. We are very practical. So I'll just give you uh, links to uh, places where you can go in your own private time and read more if you want to understand more on the theory of machine learning and uh, deep learning specifically, okay? So I'm going to link this page below which explains very, very well, um, you know, what is deep learning and, and you can go through it and there's some books in here that you can click on and you can purchase this book and you can get more information in your own private time. If you, for example, want to go for an interview and you want to get the concepts right and all of that, that's very, very important. But nowadays, you know, our technology has progressed so much and the field of machine learning has progressed so much, especially with Python, that there are so many libraries out there. There are tools that we can use that you don't have, actually have to understand, the, um, you know, uh, a lot of the algorithms that you would have to do in the past, you know, ha having to get a whole PhD in, um, you know, in algorithms to understand how to put together a machine learning model. Um, nowadays, you can just sort of build one very quickly with um, the, 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 the material and the libraries and a lot of the tools that exist out there. And I'm going to be showing you some of those tools in this um, lecture course, all right? But if you were explaining to a two-year-old, I think that much I must do. If you explain to a two-year-old basically what is deep learning and what is machine learning, it's going to be something like this, all right? Imagine you have a dog, all right? And you want to teach your dog how to fetch a stick, all right? How do you do that? Um, if you had to do it with uh, uh, traditional pro uh, programming, you would have to write code that says to the dog, if you are in this location X, Y, you must then take 10 steps forward, 10 left, uh, three steps forward, and direct the dog to where the, the stick is. 
then put your head down, pick up the stick, make a 180 degrees turn, make 100 steps, whatever, to get to where you are, give me the stick, all right? Now, you can write code to do that, but imagine now you threw the stick in a different place, and you have to now write code again. You have to tell it now, this time you must turn left instead of turning right, and it will be tedious if you have to, like, um, if, depending on the location of the stick, you have to every single time tell the dog how to navigate from where it is to where the stick is. That would be the old traditional way of programming, okay? And it works in some instances, but sometimes you get more complex problems that you can't do that. When you teach a dog how to fetch a stick, you don't tell it, go right, go left, you know, do, do this and write code for you to do that. You actually let it walk, and then if it does the right thing, what do you do? You, it brings the stick back, and if it does the right thing, you reward it. You say, oh, you've done a good job, good dog. You give it a little bit of a built on, and then it knows the next time you say to it, go fetch a stick, it will look for where the stick is, and it will find it. And obviously, if it does something that's not good, then you don't reward it, and then it knows, okay, I shouldn't do this. I must do something else that is good. So the way you would train a, God is, a, a dog is is a classic example of how uh, machine learning is. And that's how you always hear about training a model and blah, blah, blah. This is where you tell the model what it should do, all right? Because if, they, if it, then it does the right thing, then you reward it and you say, oh, you've done a good job. You give, it a, a, you give it a cookie or you give it something good if it was a dog. And then if it doesn't do the right thing, you don't reward it and then it learns. Iteratively, it learns over time that actually I get rewarded when I do this. Therefore, I must do more of that, okay? So that is, in essence, the idea of artificial intelligence and machine learning. But um, human beings, they do that instinctively, okay? We instinctively learn. From a, from a young age, I don't have to teach a child how to learn. I, I, I don't have to teach anybody how to learn. It is built into our DNA and into our brains, and that's the beauty of human beings. But when we build machines and we build code, we, we have to tell the machine what to do, all right? And, and we have to write code to tell it to do that. So when it comes to a deep learning, this is a type of, of machine learning where we sort of build neural networks within, um, you know, the, the, the algorithms to, 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 to sort of to, to simulate the way this, the, the human brain works because the human brain works with, with neural connections, you know, and the more connections you make in a certain direction, the more you learn a certain thing. You know what I'm saying? So at a very, very high level, somebody asks you on the street, what is it? You can just tell them, you know what? It is like simulating the human brain in a machine. All right, that is basically what a deep learning is, but using algorithms and mathematics and very, very deep mathematics, which you don't have to learn in order to write this code. Um, so let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do after this highly overview is, um, is, is the chatbot intense file. Okay, now this is where you're going to be telling the chatbot, um, you know, what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so um, I've written, um, you know, a very simplistic uh, intense file. And, you know, to be honest, this is like your training data, okay? So this is like what you're going to give um, the, the model to learn so that it knows that, okay, if I get this, I must do that. If I get this, I must do that. So think about it in that sense. You sort of have to give your chatbot a starting point so that it understands how it's supposed to respond when um, it's given a certain instruction or a certain a text, okay? So the way you build your intense file, we're going to build it like a JSON file, all right? And we're going to put everything into an adjacent object and then inside that JSON object we're gonna have a key that is called intents and inside that key we're gonna have like an array okay so a list of intents so that 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 intents will be a list and it can be as long as you want this just depends on all the functionality that you want your chatbot to have all right so we're gonna create a long list of intents and in that intents we're gonna have like different I don't know, modules or whatever, different parts of, you know, whatever the intent is. So every time the chatbot gets a question, it's going to have to group this question or whatever it is, the, the material it gets, it will have to group it into any one of these intents to try and figure out what is your intention? What are you trying to ask it? What do you want to achieve uh, with your question? Okay. And the more detail you create, you, you make your intense file, the more useful it's going to be and the more accurate your chatbot is going to be. So the first, um, uh, I'm going to go through just the first object, the first intent object in there. And I've got a couple of, uh, uh, you know, key, t I mean, tag, uh, keys and variables. The first one is a tag, okay? So you'll see you have a tag for all the intents. And the tag is going to be like the high level 
description of uh, of that intent okay so the first intent that we have in here is for example a greeting okay a greeting is just uh, gonna represent um, if somebody is contacting you the chatbot for the first time they're gonna start by saying hi and what do people normally do they normally will be like hi there how are you is anyone there hey hola hello so you can figure out all the different variations that the person can use to um, to say hello all right, and you are gonna tell this to uh, your model, so your model knows. Okay, if I encounter any one of these words, um, the person is trying to say hello. And then after that, um, so if any of these words, we're gonna group them under the tag of greeting. Okay, so the person is greeting me if they say any of these things. And then how I will respond is you can give it multiple responses so that your chatbot is not, you know, just like monotone chatbot every time it just says how are you how are you how are you how are you so you want to say oh hi hi stranger yeah but yes how are you how can i help you so you can give as many responses as possible that sort of represent the, the response to a, a greeting all right and depending on your culture and where you are based you can play around with this all you like and, uh, and i'm telling you this is a really fun thing to fun project to help build your python portfolio with even if you just built it for the fun of it and put it in your portfolio and then show potential employers that you've built a chatbot right so say greeting then the next one is goodbye all right goodbye you know uh some when they're done talking to you maybe they'll be like you know hell whatever goodbye see you later and then how would you respond okay so i've got multiple tags i'm not going to go through all of them in details but what what i want you to do now in building your chatbot this is the file that you must put a more effort into you know because in programming in fact in um in development you know we have this saying even in mathematics uh because my background is more is a lot in mathematics is junk in equals junk out okay you can build the fanciest model that that has got the fanciest algorithms but if you train it with crap data it's going to be a crap model okay so your intense file is where you want to spend a lot of effort thinking around all the different ways in which somebody will say something and tag it properly you know tag a hello in the right in the correct tag and don't put it in the wrong tag like if someone is saying goodbye or someone is just uh, saying thank you don't mix up the words because if you have um you know okay bye in goodbye and then you have okay bye in thanks you're gonna confuse the models you wanna know if i see okay bye is it a goodbye or is it a thanks does it fall into tag so this is where you're gonna you need to spend the majority of your time specifically dividing and deciding what goes into what tag and what are the patterns in terms of pe what people would possibly say and what response should I give it? In fact, the patterns is even more important than the response. You can even have one response if you like. If you like, I have multiple responses just so that, um, you know, you can be giving different answers and you don't look like a, like a, like a stick up, you know, stick up model. And then, um, uh, so your patterns, your responses will go into an array. Okay. So they'll go into a Python list of strings okay so this is a list of strings this is a list of strings and the tag is just a one string that represents the tag okay and this must be one word okay so that tag must be one word if you've got like more than one thing you can just attach it with an underscore okay so this chatbot that i'm building is going to be a chatbot that gives people information about south africa as a country okay so i'm going to build a very simplistic chatbot people can go to, to it and ask it questions about south africa and then it's going to answer them and if you would like you can expand this and put more more, you know more tags and then it will have more uh, possible questions people can ask ask and you know and, and it will answer and um but uh for, for teaching i think um what i've got in here is sufficient i have greeting goodbye i've got thanks i've got no answer when somebody says nothing i've got an, a name if somebody asks me what's my name the how i'll respond who am i uh you know options you know what can i do you know give it that um, you know, um, information about South Africa. This is specifically what the chatbot is built for, uh, to give people information about South Africa. Tell me about South Africa and some facts about the country. So, and then I've got the possible responses that need to go in here. Okay. So once you've done that, you're going to build your, um, your intense.json file. Remember it's a Python. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a JSON object, um, that with an intense key and instead of the intense key is a list. Okay. It's a list of objects and inside that each and every single object is a uh, intense uh, object. It has a tag, a pattern and a response. A tag is just a string. A pattern is a, is a list of strings and responses are a list of responses. And then you put in as many as you like uh, from the beginning to end. And that's basically what goes into your intense file. Okay. 
once you've built your intent file, we're going to go into some nice, interesting stuff and build our model. Okay. So I'm going to go through um, the code for building the model. And I think it's this one over there. All right. So um, we're going to discuss that in a moment. Okay, before we get started, um, there's a couple of uh, things that we need to install um, um, for our code to work properly. We have to install the natural uh, language uh, processing uh, toolkit, NumPy, Keras, and all sorts of things, but we will go through it um, as, as we need it. But, um, uh, you know, before you can install anything, you need to start by uh, creating a, a Python virtual environment. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to use virtual ENV uh, and we're going to create an environment called a uh, chat ENV. Now, I've already, um, you know, uh, installed virtual ENV. If you don't have it, you need to install it um, for your uh, machine. All right. So once you've done that, it will just go ahead and create that virtual ENV. And if you say LS, you will see it's there like a folder. Right. So as you've installed uh, that virtual ENV, then you can import all the stuff that you need. All right. So let me just... Um, uh, pip install let me start with um nltk all right and then we're gonna uh, pip install give it some time um by the way you can install them all all together uh you know, like you can say numpy nltk keras whatever install it, install them all at once but I like to install them one by one so that I, I know if I can see immediately there's an error with an installation as it's doing it. Because sometimes in a list, um, you don't, you know, it's not easy to follow where the, you know, if there was an installation problem, where it happened from. All right. So pip install. The next thing that we need to install is Keras. This is where we're going to get all our models from. Um, this is where the fun is. And, um, and Keras needs a TensorFlow to work. So you need to um, install that as well. Okay. TensorFlow like that. All right, and while I'm at it, I'm just gonna summer install um, Flask so I don't forget to do it later on because we will need it later on even though we don't need it now. Uh, let's just get it over and done with. Then we've got all our packages installed, all right? So once you've done that, uh, and yes, I just wanted to mention, um, I got a good chunk of my uh, chat uh, bot code from this article. I'm gonna link it in the description below because I think he spends a lot of time uh explaining some of the details that i don't have time to explain in a youtube video but you can read through it and um you can even access the some of the his original code even though i've modified the code quite a bit to be able to work with uh flask but um you can uh, it, it, a lot of the basic concepts of um you know deep learning and chatbot creation you can read off this article from uh, medium all right so I'll, I'll i'll attach this in the uh in the description below as well all right so let's get into the code now um we're gonna in, in, import um nltk at the top then and what we need nltk for is to sort of process the words that we get um in a way that simplifies uh you know the words uh you know so that we can be able to put it through our coding all right so you'll see right at the top here um we start to uh create um you know like a list obviously we've got a, a word a list of words classes uh, documents uh, but more importantly, um, we go through the intent file that we just did over there. All right. We go through the intent file and just sort of uh, tokenize all the words. You know, for example, um, we go through uh, for intent and intent, which means we are now iterating this, this through this whole intent list. All right. We want to use um, the natural language processor to uh, tokenize um, each and every pattern. All right. And the pattern is obviously these ones over here at the top, all right, so that we can get the, you know, sort of like the deep meaning behind it. And after we've tokenized it, you'll see at the top there, we add it to the words list, and then we go and we lamenticize all those words, all right? And I think I want, this is what I want to spend a little bit of time um, explaining is, is what is uh, what is to lament, lamenticize a word, or what, what, is, what is this code specifically doing? Um, if you go and you search for it in a dictionary, it will explain very clearly. It is to break down a word to its uh, specific meaning because we want to simplify our, you know, language as much as possible for the machine to understand it. You know, somebody might say, you know, um, I was crying and somebody might say I cried. Another person might say, you know, she cries. You know, it all has the same base meaning in terms of, you know, all those words, are the, the base meaning of all those words is cry, okay? So when you lamenticize a word, you break it down to its base meaning without the present, past tense, and all the other things that will confuse, um, you know, your coding. So, for example, um, the word cry 
the word uh, crying, the word cried, the word cries, all have the same, uh, 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 you know, uh, lemma behind them and that lemma is cry so it's so a cry all of those they mean that you are shedding tears and you're crying so we're basically lamentizing or uh, lamentizing lamentizing all the words that we are getting inside of our intents to get their base meaning so that the, the computer can understand what is that meaning of the word all right and then later on uh, when we get when we create our documents, we are then going to um, you know connect the meaning of the word with the intent, so that if so with the intent or the tag over here, so this tag is going to be like for example the intent of that word. So if you get helpful thanks and you've lamentized thanks helping me, all of that uh, may maybe have the same uh, lemma. We, we we now connect that lemma meaning to uh, the tag thanks. So it's like if if anybody says any of these things with this, with the base meaning of thanks, it means thanks. Basically, this is what this code is doing, all right. But not to waste too much of your time and bore you. You will be able to copy and paste this code um, at the end when I'm done with it. But um, this is basically what the code is doing over here. And then after that, this bit of code over here is now creating a training data because remember what I told you uh, with when you're doing um you know machine learning, you basically instead of telling um, the dog to walk straight, go left, go right, uh, jump three times. You are letting it do what it wants to do, but you train it so that if it does the right thing, you reward it. And if it doesn't do the right thing, you don't reward it. So this is basically where that training comes in. All right. You're writing code. You are telling it that, um, you know, you're going to have pattern words that you're going to create. And then you are telling it that if you get the word, which has this lemma, this is the, you know, the, the pattern that it means so that it understands how to classify the different words that it's going to be getting. In high level, that's basically what you're doing here. You are telling the machine um, what a specific meaning should be associated with, all right? And obviously, everything will be working within a certain level of error and accuracy, and we're going to get into, um, you know, the allowable um, accuracy and all of that uh, later on. And then once you've done that, you're going to create your set of training data, all right? And that training data is what you're going to fit into your model, all right? And we're going to use a very simple model called a sequential model, okay? And the sequential model, we are importing it at the top over there from Keras, okay? So from this, and there's many types of models you can use. Uh, I must mention this now. There's, there's, there's many, you know, uh, types. If you, if you know a little bit about mathematics, Mathematics. Um, on a very high level, you understand. You understand x plus y is equals to z, right? X plus y is equals to z is a model, all right? It is a, um, a a straight line model, for example. There's a word for it, right? But then there are different types. You can have, you know, uh, by whatever model, three times model, four times model, and models get even more complicated as you get, you know, uh, more complex functions. But basically, we are working with um, the, one of the most basic ones, which is a sequential one, and we're going to work off of that and try to fit the data to that model. And then after we fit the data to that model, then uh, we we're gonna then give it more information and have it tell us what that information means. So basically, our intent that we're creating over here is gonna help us uh, train the model by telling us if you get this, this is what this is the greeting. If you get that, it's a goodbye. If you get that, it's a no answer. If you get that, it's a name. And train it that way so that when I'm now chatting to it, whatever word I'm gonna give it, it might not be exactly the same word as in here. But it will be trained enough to understand that actually the main meaning, the, le the lemma of that word, if I have to like base, look, 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 based on what I've learned already, what I've been shown, what means what, what you're saying means this. Therefore, this is the response I've got to give you. That's basically, in essence, what a chatbot really does. Okay. So um, we, we're building our model. We use a sequential model. And I've, um, there's some notes in here at the top saying that, you know, um, the first, you know, it's built in three layers. and But that don't worry about it. Just you just build it the way we've done it. With, um, we then compile the model and then we fit it to that training data that we created um, at the top over there. All right. And we'll make this code available for you um, to work with. But again, you can also find it off this, um, um, you know, um, article that I'm going to link in the description below. Perhaps I'll just let you get it from this article so that I don't replicate other people's models, all right? I mean, other people's code. So I'm just going to copy this code as it is like that over there, all right? Actually, I'm not going to copy all of it. Um, I'm going to, first of all, yeah, I'm going to copy all of it. Yeah, let's just copy all of it. All right, and then I'm going to go over here. You'll see there's nothing in here except for the virtual environment with all the stuff that we've installed. And then I'm going to call this uh, chatbot.py and then I'm going to paste it in there. 
right? Uh, and there's a couple of things that this, this, this code is doing over there. It prints for us the documents, the classes, and the words, so you can see the different stuff. But at the end of the day, it also goes through and, and completes the model, compiles it, and it's going to save the model um, uh, in a file called chatbotmodel.h5. You'll see this, this, this file currently uh, doesn't exist here. If you ls, it doesn't exist. But once you've run this function, it will save this file over there. So it's, so you have to run this function before you can do anything else just to create the model. Once you create the model, everything that we do in the future then will be working off the model. And if you change your intent or you want to, uh, you know, uh, maybe even change the accuracy of your model or the type of model you want to work with, then you have to rerun this function every time. All right. So the job intents as well, I'm going to copy this because um, the, the, the model, the chatbot file is going to need the, the intents uh, to work with. And I'm going to just say nano um, job dot JSON. All right. And then we're going to paste that in there. All right, all right, and then let's just uh, click yes, and then we'll see there's our intense file and this our chatbot and um, our virtual environment. So what we can basically do, we can run our chatbot file. When we run it, we should expect to see the model being created over there. So what it's going to do when we run it, it's going to go through all of that. It's going to collect our intents. It's going to tokenize the words. It's going to lamenticize the words. It's going to create our classes, our documents, and our words. So you have like uh, words which are just like a string, a list of strings. Classes are also a list of strings, but they're a list of the intents uh, or the tags, all right, the tags for the intents. And then finally, the documents is sort of like a tuple between um, the class and the word. And that's what's used to, you know, sort of associate a word to a specific class. And that's what we use when we are training the data at the bottom and building our model. All right. So I'm going to just run this and hope everything goes well. I'm crossing my fingers. We're going to run uh, chatbot.py. There's a couple of things it does in the background, but um, let's just give it some time. Okay, and at the end it says model created, and I think that is at the end of the file it creates that model, all right? So, um, um, let's see at the top there, there's a couple of words it should have printed for us. So these are all the words that it, it got from the, okay. So this, these are the classes you'll see it's a list of strings and these classes are exactly the same as what we have over here as our intent. You see it's greeting, goodbye, thanks, no answer, name options. So these are goodbye, greeting, name options, whatever. And then you'll see the lamenticize words. All right. These are now the simplified you know, with the word taken down to their, like, you know, their base, base meaning, all right? So anyone, our name, okay, purpose, see some, you know, these are all the lamenticized words. And then um, there's something I was looking for, 53 documents. 53 documents, but it didn't print the documents, it did it not. Okay, so it just says print the length of the documents and the documents. It doesn't actually print the documents. Okay, I should have printed it, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. At this point, I'm going to then clear um, what I have over here, and I'm going to list, and you'll see now we have a couple of files. We have the chatbot uh, model H5. Uh, so this is the model that we just created now. Okay, it's created by this file over here when it, um, you know, it saves this model when it finishes building them with this hist model, when it finishes training and doing all of that, it saves it under that name. And this is the model that we're then going to import uh, into our Flask application to be able to, um, you know, to then uh, talk to uh, what we want to, you know, to, to respond to, uh, to, the, to, to, to whatever we want to respond to. And also it's created other files over there. So it's created these files, um, words.pkl and classes.pkl. These were not there before, you know, classes.pkl and words.pkl. It created them. Um, it's just saving them after it's, it's made them over there because we're going to need them also um, when we are processing our, you know, information on the other side and lamenticizing words on the other side to work off the classes when we are now fitting the, not fitting, but like when we are, you know, when we're getting uh, sentences or questions being asked in the front end, we're going to be using as much as we're going to be using the model, we're going to need these files as well 
to help us fit the questions into the right um into the right classes okay so the hard work is done basically when you're building a chatbot the hard work of building a chatbot is to build the chatbot model itself once you build the chatbot model actually the hard work is done the only thing that's left now is to do the front end get a, you know be able to now get our questions and give the responses right so if we go back to our, our lecture notes, um, we've done the overview, we've done the intense file, we've created our model, and now we're going to go through the file to, to process our data, and then finally we'll create the Flask application for the front end to deal with um, the processing of the data, all right? Uh, the processing of the data is going to be done by this um, file that I've written over there that's called uh, processor.py file. This also I have to give credit to uh, where it's due uh, to um, the gentleman that did this article with uh, very good explanations as well. I learned a lot from this, but um, you know I'll explain it to you as well over here but basically um this is now the front end part not the front it's still the back end but it's after you've built your model and now you are uh, trying to you're getting a question into your chatbot and you want to process that question um so that you can get a response from the model as to you know what should the chatbot say if it gets that question right so this is the processing of that um documentation all right so you're gonna need again your lamentize your lamentizer you're gonna need um you know your models uh, so you can load your models and then um you're gonna need all the, those pickle files that we created over there um these ones um we're gonna need this you know this word this these words and classes um to work with on the other side as well all right so the first function that we're going to be working with is basically just just cleaning up the sentence okay so uh, a sentence is going to be like let's say i ask a question hi how are you okay that question we're going to put it through our language processor and uh, lamenticize it and sort of break it down into words and meaning right uh into the base meaning of every single word that is in that sentence right and then we're going to create um you know there's some other stuff you know predicting class over there um this is where we're going to now be working off the you know the the the, the model to predict um of, of the model to with the sentence to predict what um you know the intent should be all right so you'll get the code for this as well and then after we have that that predicting of the, that predicting class we're going to be able to use it to um get a response and um and these two files actually just work hand in hand is that if you get a question how do you um, get the intent of that question so that you can um, get a response, all right? And because in our responses, we've got a list of responses in a lot of cases, um, we usually just like randomly choose um, one of the responses. So for example, if we end up with um, um, this tag of name that we understand that the person is trying to ask my name, um, I can, uh, the, the chatbot can give it, can give any of the random responses. You can say, hi, I'm Karabo. It can say, my name is Karabo. It can say, you can call me Garabo, you know, like it has variable, uh, you know, uh, sort of, uh, you know, responses that it can give. That's why you have the random choice of responses over there. And then obviously in here, you know, this and this file is pretty much the same, all right? So there's a couple of things you're doing now, you know, you're, you're, you're cleaning up the sentence, um, you are, um, uh, you know, uh, put, creating a bag of words from that sentence, you're then uh, creating a, a model, I mean, not, not creating model, but you're predicting, you're using a model and that sentence that you've just made to predict, um, you know, where does that sentence fit into the list of, um, you know, of classes, you know, so that you can figure out what is actually the person asking. Uh, and then after that, you then give them a random response from the available responses that you have over there, all right? So basically what that last code is doing to repeat again is that it just takes the sentence, it cleans it up, and then it, 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 it fits it to the model to figure out based on the model, where does that uh, sentence fit? What is the intent of that, of that sentence? And then if it figures out, okay, the intent is name, and then it now must figure out between the, all the responses I have for name, which response must I give it? So basically this is what the processing file is doing for us, all right? And I'll give this code to you as well so that you can go through it in more detail. Then once we've done that, um then we're gonna build our um we're gonna build our you know our our flask application all right and our flask application is gonna be very very simple we're going to have two files basically we're gonna have an app.py file where we define the flask application and then we're gonna have an index.html file um you know where um you know uh, we have um we have the uh the, the template all right so um i'm gonna create a new file over there and I'm going to call it 
indexes dot html all right and in that indexes dot html i'm just going to create an html document and then i'm going to call this colo over there i'm going to have this as h1 and i'm going to call this colo over there all right and then i'm going to create a um a python um app.py file to um to deal with that all right this is a very minimal this is the minimal minimalistic um, you know, Flask code that you need to get a Flask application running. This is why Flask is called a, a lightweight um, <laughs> web application framework because it actually really requires, uh, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines of code to run a simple um, web application, all right? So um, at the top there, we're importing Flask. We've already installed it in our virtual environment. We're going to import processor, which is this file that we just went through now um, that is doing the processing. So this file over there, uh, where is it? Um, this processing file is we're gonna import it at the top. All right, we're not using it yet, so maybe I'm going to just um, not import it for now. Um, and then um, we have the Flask app, and then the physical keys, the absolute minimum that you need to include in here. And make sure you use like a, an important secret key that you're not gonna that's not easily guessable because this protects your whole application. Um, and then after that. You know, we just have one root, and that root will render the template uh, index.html, basically, and then we're going to run off port 8888. So let's do that, all right? So let's uh, make a directory uh, called a template, and let's uh, cd into that, into that directory. All right, and then we're going to create our index dot html i know i called it indexes it's just because i already have a file called index and i didn't want to give you the same name but um it's going to be called index either way and we are going to let's just say scholar online learning so it's just going to be an html file with one h1 tag that says scholar online learning All right and then we're going to copy that and put it inside of the html and then after that we're going to close the html and then we're going to cd out of the and then we're going to open app.py and um, this is what we're going to put in here uh, basically um, not much we just importing flask um, uh, secret config and if you go to the app you're just going to render the template and that's it all right and then once we've done that um, we can then run the application okay um, app.py and it runs on uh, port 8888. Let's go and have a look at our internet. On port 8888, let's just restart that. And then you just have that one H1 tag that says Scholar Online Learning. So basically what we need to do with this is that we need to transform um, this uh, HTML, um, um, index.html, we need to transform this into at least a form which has one input that we can use that input to send stuff to the back end and um, get some response from our application. So our application is going to be in here. So if we send something to the back end, we'll receive it like in a form over here or on a root. And when we receive it, we're going to then import this processor at the top. And then we're going to be able to import the functions, specifically the function that we need is this one over here, the chatbot response. Okay, we're going to be able to import this uh, function and put in the message that we're getting and then it's going to process and go through all of this code and it's going to return to us the response and then that's what we're going to give out in the front end so that's basically how simple it is actually this whole code um the, i spend most of the time building the flask application than writing the chatbot code um so let's 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 do that quickly um the first thing is um uh to make our our, our, our flask obviously look nicer and for that we're going to use bootstrap and if you, maybe I'll link this as well, but I don't think that's necessary because it's, it's quite simple to get to the Bootstrap website. It's getbootstrap.com docs getting started. Or you can just Google Bootstrap, bootstrap getting started. But what I want to get for, for you from here is, is a, a, I'm going to attach the style sheet and the, um, you know, the, the CSS and the, uh, you know, JavaScript from the CDN so that you don't have to actually install it yourself. All right. So basically all you have to do is, um, you can even find the, the bootstrap minimalistic example, which is this one over there. All right. So you can even use that. You can like copy this, um, and you can replace it inside of your HTML. All right. So instead of your HTML, instead of having that, you can replace that and then it will have all your other, you know, stuff in here, but I'm going to write this code off camera. 
um, to save you some time and then um, we'll continue where I will explain to you um, just what I've written. So we've um, edited the code um, quite a bit. Um, what I've done to my HTML file is um, at the top there, I've added the title and then um, I import the, the bootstrap um, CSS and the theme from, um, you know, from the, from, the, from the website. So basically, if you go to the bootstrap website, you will see at the top here, they've got code for, um, you know, the style sheet and the theme. And then at the bottom, they've got code for um, the script. You know, uh, obviously, that the link, um, uh, these two links, they go inside of the head of your HTML. And then these ones go in the body just before the closing uh, tag and tag of the body. So uh, how you would put it on your HTML is that the links, they go inside of the head. So in between the opening and the closing uh, head tag is where you would put the links, um, the style sheet, which is the main CSS and the theme. And then the, uh, the, the, um, the, 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 the JavaScript, it goes over the, the bootstrap main um, the JS JavaScript goes inside um, um, the inside of the body. All right, so the body opening and the body closing, it goes in before, just before the body closes so that it gets downloaded at the end after the page loads, um, then it gets downloaded so it doesn't slow down the loading of the page. But technically, you could put it anyway, uh, to be honest. Then uh, once you've, you have the Bootstrap CDN uh, JavaScript, you need jQuery, okay? Um, Bootstrap uh, JS needs jQuery, but we also need jQuery to do our... Um, um, you know, our um, Ajax call because that's how we're going to be talking to the back end, all right? So, um, uh, jQuery can use a CDN for jQuery, but sometimes the CDNs don't work. Like, um, it's up to you. You can look for jQuery CDN, you can Google it, and I found a website. Um, maybe I'll link it for you, or you can just go there, code.jQuery.com, and you can have a look at all, all the different um, CDNs. The one that you want is the core, um, um, you know, CDN, and you can just like sort of like um open or click there and you'll see the code for downloading it and then um you can you can import it in your code i mean save it in your code like that but i've got the actual physical file because i use jquery a lot in my html um and if you do as well you can just use one of those files which you know work so that you don't have to worry about whether the cdn is going to work or not work and this will be faster to load anywhere than the cdn because jquery is really the problem when it comes to uh, uh, these ajax stuff um if your jquery is not the right one um, you're gonna have issues. Then once you have your jQuery and your and your uh, Bootstrap loaded up, um, your page is gonna look much better than it looked before because it's gonna be nicely designed. And then after that, we're gonna write the script for the Ajax. Okay, so there's this 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 couple of things we're doing. We are going to have a, a form, all right? And I don't have it inside of a form tag. You'll see over there, I don't have it like a typical Flask or Python form because I'm not going to be using uh, the Flask form uh, method to submit this form. I'm gonna be using jQuery. So it's not, you don't need the opening and closing tags of a form, all right? So all I have is a row. And inside of that row, I have an input. And that input is a type text input, and I'm going to call it question, and then I'm going to give you the ID of question. Okay, so this is where people are going to be able to enter the question that they want to send to their chatbot. And then once they've done that, um, um, there is the button, and the button is just going to be on the same row. So you have a, a column LG9 where you have the input, and then I have a column LG3 where I have the button. Okay, and I'm just gonna use a button primary, and on that button, I'm gonna have a send, a send um, you know, text written on it, okay? So it will just be like a an input um, to, the, to the left and to the right of it, you'll have, um, you know, the button that says send, and then people will be able to enter the text and send it, okay? And once they, they press a send, what I have over here is a, um, um, it's going to be like a, 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 an Ajax a process that will uh, be activated once the submit button gets clicked. Okay, that's why I didn't use a form in this specific sense. I just have like a, a submit button click function, which means I need the button ID. And that button ID is this one over there, submit button. So once that button gets clicked, this is going to happen. Okay, so once you click that button, the first thing we were doing is that we're trying to prevent the default. So the default doesn't happen. And then once we've done that, we're going to uh, do the Ajax request. And then on our Ajax, it's going to be a type post. The URL is URL chatbot. So it's going to look for the same application that we add. And uh, we're going to create a new um, um, endpoint called chatbot. All right. And then once it sends that post data to that endpoint called a chatbot, um, the data that we're going to send through is just a question. It's going to be like a, a JSON object with a question. 
and the question is going to be um, that question value, the value that's in the question ID, um, you know, play. So when you look at, when you see the question ID, um, where we, we're going to type that question, whatever value that's going to be typed in there, it's what it's going to take, okay? So we're going to take that question value and we're going to send it to the back end to the URL a chatbot, okay? And then when it gets a response, it will uh, display the response, it will uh, display, display the response inside of um, the response um, ID. So the response ID is this one over here. ID response is just a paragraph with nothing on it. Okay, so it starts off as an empty paragraph and every time we get a response We just append we take that a paragraph and we append the question and we append the result So we're gonna see like a question at the top We're gonna have a break and the question and then we're gonna have a break and the response that looks like it's coming on two different lines All right, and then the question will be under will be next to me So I'll have me uh, the words me and me which is me with a question that I've typed and then we have a break and then Karabo is the name of our um, of our chatbot. Uh, there will be a break and then Karabo will say whatever the response is and then you'll see it like that on the front end, okay? And if you look at the at the function side on the chatbot, um, on the chatbot, um, the chatbot, um, you know, endpoint that we just uh, are going to be sending our information to, we have both get post. To be, on, to be honest, you only need this to be post, all right? And um, you only need that to be get, okay? But I usually just do get post so I don't get confused. But for safety, you actually just want to make sure that you have the right one. So the method for this is get, and the method for that is post. And then you don't, you wouldn't then need to say if method request is post. So maybe let me just leave it the way it was, all right? Yeah. So if the request, if the method is post, and remember you have to then import request at the top, and this request is different from requests, the request library. Okay, this is a request that comes from Flask. Okay, so if the method is if is post, we're just gonna get the question, which is the form, and we're gonna get that ID question from the form. All right. So actually, it's not an ID; it's it's the name. All right. So you need to give it the same name as form. You need to call it the form. So at the uh, up here, you know, you have the name form. Um, and then therefore at the back end when you say request that form um, question um, then you will be able to find from that form um, anything that's called a name actually not the sorry because we're doing this via um, um, jQuery um, the name needs to be um, that one day all right so uh, within this data object that we're sending across if we had a question and let's say we had something else you know answer whatever the 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 the, 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 J, the Jason um, whatever the um, you know, the, the key would be is that key that you need to um, look for over there. Then after that, the response is just going to be processor, uh, chatbot response. And then you make sure that we, we import processor at the top. And that processor, obviously, is this file called processor. It's going to do all of these things. And at the end of it, you just have that uh, chatbot response message. Okay, so you can just copy that and take it into your app.py and you need to then just paste it like that all right and then the msg obviously is the message that that needs to be processed okay and that message obviously is the question all right the question is the one that needs to be processed and obviously then you need to say processor dot so that it gets this off the processor file that's how we got that and then we're going to give it a, a, a we're going to give that variable a name uh, we're going to call it response all right that's how we ended up with that um, um you know variable over there okay so there's no need to have it twice then once you've done that you're gonna then return a justified response okay response response that response is the response that comes from over there and then if you come to the front end um to the index you know that results the response is gonna come in on success so if everything was successful you will get the result and that result is, is going to be that JSON, JSONified object. So this whole object is going to be the result, all right? So um, that result, we will then um, append, um, we'll use that response, uh, you know, ID that, uh, you know, um, tag that has a response ID. We're just going to append the question that was asked and the response that, that, that was given, all right? So basically, that's it. So it's just um, an HTML file to take in the questions and display the responses from the chatbot. And over here, we just have like the roots that, that, that will take in the questions and then um, talk to our chatbot inside of the processor file, which is over there. And then uh, send the chatbot the question, and then the chatbot is going to give us a response, and then we're going to send that response to the front end. Okay, so that's basically all you need to do. So we're going to go back to our front to our machine over here, and we're going to cd into template. All right, and we need to obviously remove what is in here index.html what we had there before. Um, 
actually let's just do that remove your HTML and then we're gonna uh, create a new uh, HTML file all right I'm just gonna take this file as it is over the end copy it and paste it over there and then um, we are then going to um, CD out of there and we're gonna um, let's see we're gonna create a new um, first of all we need to create this uh, processor file okay let me just have a look I haven't created it there so I need to just say no no uh, let me not get the spelling wrong okay so I'm gonna copy it from here so I don't know from the app.py okay so I don't get that spelling wrong so it needs to be nano processor.py all right and then we're gonna paste everything that's inside of the processor file I've already taken you through this code all right so we're gonna just copy it and paste that in there all right then once we've done that then we can do nano app.py okay there is something in there already instead of uh, reworking all of that i'm just going to remove remove that file that is there and create a new one okay and then i can paste um you know the only change between really what we had in there is that we created this new um chatbot root okay so the index root remains the same we don't do anything to that so we paste that in there all right and then let us uh, click enter and then let us run it and see uh python app.py all the reason why it's doing this and it's it's going into tensorflow is because um over here we have import processor okay and when we import the processor file it goes through all of that okay it imports numpy it imports keras it, it actually even imports um um you know um the intents the words the classes the pickle whatever it imports all of this and as it does that um it you know it, it runs all of these as well in the background so you see that written but it's nothing to worry about um, even these arrows over here, if you're running this on a, um, a, um, a VPS or virtual private server, don't, you don't need to worry about the fact that you don't have a GPU set up because you don't have a, you know, a graphical process or whatever. Just, just uh, you know, ignore some of these warnings. Your code will still run properly. So we're going to then go to our, um, you know, instead of that, we should see the new HTML file that we just created with the form. Okay, there it is. Um, so if you look at our HTML file, where is it? Um, our index.html, you see we have just one h1 that says welcome to scholar and then we immediately have the row with the with the form in there and then we have the at the bottom of the form we have the p but it's invisible now because it's not invisible it just doesn't have anything in it and it will only get populated as it gets responses from our ajax um, request over there and the reason why i did this with ajax as opposed to doing a typical flask form is that i didn't want to reload the page every time because we if you're working with a form you know that every time you submit a form um you basically have to reload um the page okay i wanted to keep the old page and just sort of like send information to the back end and get responses with the page not getting reloaded because um i want to be able to display the answers um with the page as so that I, when i get the new answer the previous answer is still there and you'll see what i'm talking about when i'm working off the page so this page gets loaded once okay um ajax doesn't reload the, the page every time it actually sends a response while the page remains as is and it's a nice nifty trick to use inside of flask when you want to do stuff like that so um i'm going to say hello all right so hello so it should typically now go into um um, if our chatbot is trained properly, it should go into the, it should pick it up in, into the greeting um, intent. It should figure out that I'm greeting. So it should, it will go through my code. It will go through the processor over there and it will clean up the sentence. It will uh, use the prediction to predict sort of which, um, you know, um, intent it belongs to. And then it will go through the intent and get the response from the random um, choice of responses for that intent. So basically, um, it, it, will, it should figure out that the intent is this tag of greeting and then uh, from that hello uh, and then from there it should figure it should send me one of these responses randomly all right if everything works well okay so I'm gonna say hello and send um, there you go hello it says you again okay so you again should be one of the responses over here you again there it is okay it's one of the responses over there i'm gonna say hello again and and and, and see which other response is gonna send me this time 
Um, hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Uh, it is also a greeting that falls into the greeting. So it figures out, it predicted the greeting well. And you can test it really. And, you know, deep learning is really smart. And you can test it with all sorts of types of greeting. Um, hi, you know, um, and it should, it should always figure out that this is, you're trying to greet, okay? After that, um, what is your name? Okay, so when you say what is your name, what is your name should now go into the name intent, all right? So you should figure out, you're asking it its name and it should give you one of the responses down here, all right? So what is your name? Let's send that. Uh, my name is Karabo, name please. Let's see if it figures that out. Uh, name please. I'm Karabo, my friends call me KB, all right? So name please, I just wanna see that. What is your name, your name? Tell me your name, who are you, Ungorani, who you are. You see, name please is not in any of these, you know, what is your name? It's not in any of these uh, questions that I've used to train, okay? But because we lamentize the words in there, it's going to pick up the word name. And it's going to figure out that the word name, this is why it's called like it's an intelligent thing. It's thinking now beyond, because if you're doing programming, you would have had to, to guess all the possible ways somebody can be asked, can, 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 can ask for a name. And you'll see that name please is not included in here, but it figured it out. It figured out that actually, even though you're saying name please, you're really just asking for the name, all right? And it's, and it's going to give you one of the responses that go with the name. And that's the power of deep learning. That's the power of neural networks, you know, that you can, once you train your code well enough, it can give you an answer even if it hasn't seen that um data set before in its training because it will work off its training and try to figure out what you mean okay from its own so it's thinking okay it's basically artificially thinking using the neural networks and that's the beauty of a deep learning chatbot and you might see other types of chatbot out there chatbots out there that don't work like a deep learning chatbot that if you give it a question that it hasn't seen before it doesn't know the answer all right, but in this specific case, you give it a question it hasn't seen before. It will think through that question and think about what does this question really mean and give you an answer from its training. Okay, so um, once you've done that, um, let's see some other ones. You know, what do you do? What do you do? Um, I can tell you about South Africa. Okay, so um, give me some facts. All right, give me some facts. Um, Table Mountain in South Africa is believed to be one of the oldest mountains in the world. Da, 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 da. You know, oh, okay. That's cool. Now I'm I'm tri I'm tripping with it. That's cool, my pleasure. So it's it's that is cool. It is taking that's cool as a thank you. All right. So it's feeling it's it's putting that's cool into a thank you. This is really, really, this is really, really cool. Like that is cool. Um even though, um, let's see, thanks, um, uh, thank you, that is helpful, um, awesome, thanks, thanks for helping me, that is cool, is no way inside of the patterns that I've given it, okay, but it, it just figures out, if you're saying this is cool, you're happy, or you're thanking it, and um, it gives you a response that goes with uh, my pleasure, which is, you know, um, is thanking you. So this is really beautiful. This is powerful and you can you can use this for anything like you can expand in, Into your intents and put in you know uh, other things and you can like put in other intents You can actually build your own, you know Java's you can build your own, you know Like friend um, that talks to you about stuff if you have enough intents in the obviously the more intents you have Maybe it will get confused if the intents becomes too similar But you know be smart about how you enter your intents in there so that you know you remember junk in equals junk out Okay, how you put your intents does a lot with um, what the code is going to come up with. But deep learning is really one of the smartest, um, you know, types of learning out there. Okay, so have fun, guys, with this. Uh, put this in your portfolio. This is an amazing thing to show a potential employer um, that you can build a deep learning chatbot. And we'll see you guys again um, next time.